Thank you, Madhavi. Thanks for coming. Um, thanks for being here. It's really lovely to see you again. And uh, hey, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you do a session with Jerry, who's like a rock star? No, he sort of walks on stage. Says, "Thank you very much. You've been a wonderful audience, even before you've been an audience." <laughs> And he comes on stage barefoot. I mean, it's like, how is this possible? But it's it's one of his signals that you know, mere things of the world do not matter to Jerry Pinto. Um, and in fact, it was I. I have met Jerry in Bombay very, very few times. I've always met him on the Litfest circuit in Jaipur, in Uti, in you know, various places where Jerry. Uh, those of you who know him will not be surprised by this. Is always up to no good. <laughs> always up to sort of shenanigans that no one else would even think about. Da -da 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 -oh. <laughs> I love that, that. I told you, rock star. <laughs> <laughs> My theme Ro song. Roll over, Beethoven. <laughs> um, but it's wonderful to see him in Bombay at a session called Bombay Local uh, to discuss a book which, as Ratna so wonderfully said in her introduction, is very much about Bombay. So I feel a bit like an interloper since I'm not from Bombay. And in fact, I'm from Bombay's traditional rival, Delhi. Yeah. Um, we but, forgive you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've grown to love Bombay over the years. And that's in, through no uh, little sort of achievement of reading Jerry Pinto's Thank work. Um, and so I feel sort of quite legitimate in wanting to be here to talk about the education of Yuri. Um, you know, in some languages, the Y and the J would be pronounced. Um, <laughs> so the education of Yuri is not too much of a stretch to the education of jury. <laughs> jury, Jerry. So I want to talk about that as well, of course. But um, let me begin by saying, Jerry, how much I loved this book. Thank you so much. And how happy I am to be here with you. you. And of course, all of you, if you haven't bought it, you must go and buy it right away. Um, and what I loved about this book, and actually let's begin by thinking about our location in Bombay Local, in a session called Bombay Local. And I just want to ask you, all your books, M and the Big Home, Murder and Mahim, uh, all your novels, hmm. and uh, Education of Yuri, are all so deeply drenched <laughs> with Bombay. Yeah. Right? So can you just sort of talk at first about the relationship between character and place for you? Sure. I think, you know, uh, I would say that the city has been my most precious uh, repository. It was literally an archive that was handed over to me, I think, at my birth. Um, and I, you know, all of us who live in the city uh, are just heirs to millions of stories. And it's not as if you have to dig out these stories. These stories are available to you in passing. So I remember the first time I got onto a train, I was going to Banaras on a long distance trip. It was my first trip out of the city, uh, you know, on my own. And I, was, I got into the train and there was an old man sitting in front of me and his leg was bandaged. Uh, so I, immediately I sat down, I said, Chacha, kya hua? what happened to your foot? And he said, hey, kya bataun, beta? I had an operation and it has not healed, dekho. And he started unwrapping <laughs> the bandage. Then he said, yaha dabao, yaha dabao. So uh, gingerly, I pressed a little and some liquid poured out of like a... <laughs> ha. And I said, are, 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 are. and he said, haan, dekho, yehi to problem hai. And dekin, mein abhi ayurvedic dawai kar raha hu, ek jadi booti leke, gista hu, gista hu, aap gisenge. So I said, haan, de, dijiye. So I started gisawing jadi booti, we put it, we wrapped it up. And then we started chatting in the way, and by the time 36 hours were over, I knew all about him and he turned out to be such a wonderful fellow. He was trying to create a single script between Kanyakumari to Kashmir from Assam, from Assam to Gujarat. He told me about the khak sound, he told me about the sound, the zh sound. All these had to be in the script and he had drawn a beautiful chart. Then he opened the chart and he was pointing out. I just think, I just completely fell in love with it. And this was, of course, the time before, uh, you know, mobile phones or anything. So when we got down, we parted. But he had left me stained. He had drenched me in his story. He told me everything I needed to know about him. If I ever have to reinvent him, I can hear him in my ears somewhere. So, you know, when I see young people walking down the street with ear pods and cutting out the world, I think, stupid idiot! Stop it! Start that talking! Huh? That is half the audience here. Everybody Possibly. Yeah. 
maybe even now we take your po- your pods thinking like a bit chhod ya what is talking <laughs> so i'm saying i uh, you know the fact of this city uh, that we are compressed in a way that no enlightened zoo keeper would keep animals you know in that intense dense uh, concentration of humanity the only gift that the city can give you is the richness of the story fabric that is wrapping you around every day every moment and how can you not like people say uh, you know would you think about writing about delhi or calcutta beautiful cities in their own rights glorious with and for me cities are not cities right. it's not like uh, uh, you know like uh, shakespeare shorani is calcutta or uh, lal i mean uh, chandni chowk is delhi Uh, for me delhi is ravi singh is madhvi menon is gil it's uh, geeta harihan for for me calcutta is rustam bharucha uh, navin kishore it's people people make cities people stories make cities we every city is a concatenation of forgotten histories working presence and dreams for the future together that makes a city that's what constitutes the city and if you look at that as a map that's the map of a novel everyone's a novel everyone's around you is a possibility and you know you just have to start talking to your taxi driver i was in a in a cab with uh, with my friend aparna and we had a very short journey it was from ballard estate so nice to be in bombay where you don't have to explain where ballard estate is <laughs> from ballard estate to metro and we got into the cab and we sat down at the back and the man driving it said aap parsi hain to me which is a question i get fairly regularly aap anything hain except catholic so <laughs> i said nahi ji ye aisa naseeb kahan hai so he said no because i am a pande and am i but my son has married a parsi wo bahut sari baatein karti hai bahut pyari baatein karti hai lekin kya kahe kare abhi wo bahut sa maas bhi khati hai तो हमें ना और एक नया किचन uh, बनाना पड़ा उनके लिए सो दैट शी विल बी एबल टू कुक हर स्टफ दे एंड वी कैन रिमेन पांडेज हियर बिकॉज गॉड इज अ डायटिशियन इन द सब कॉन्टिनेंट ही इज ओनली इंटरेस्टेड इन वॉट यू ईट एंड हाउ यू ईट इट एंड वेन यू ईट इट एंड नॉट बिफोर सनसेट एंड डोंट ईट दैट एंड ईट दिस दैट्स गॉड्स ड्यूटी द रेस्ट ऑफ इट लाइक कमान गो किल पीपल एनी सो एंड देन बाई द टाइम वी अराइव एट मेट्रो he said or agar aap kuch madad kar sakte hain to he had his pitch <laughs> and his pitch finished exactly at the time that we arrived at metro i thought you know you should be doing ott <laughs> you have the whole story isme action hai isme emotion hai and isme ek end of the cliffhanger of a demand aap kuch madad we didn't of course give money because that's the question i kept asking i keep getting asked when i tell the story aapne diya kuch kya why do you give us something and i said we allowed him to keep the change and got done but <laughs> well you allowed him air time right so, yeah. you, you sort yeah. of allowed no, him no but to that's speak. not that's not no 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 that's the gift okay for me nobody ever interrupts me nobody ever st- like i mean you know people say too much information these young people say too much information and i, I think mean, the ones you, who are on the earphones that like earphone right, right, idiots those ones yeah. they say too much information when you know like i mean someone tells them about about like you know their diarrhea or something i cannot imagine how there is such a thing as too much information if you in my generation you went to a parsi household or a bengali household constipation and diarrhea were part of breakfast conversation <laughs> this everybody knew and you know there were certain things that like i mean if you knew whether you were in a parcel household when someone said jellusel apni and you knew in a, uh, in a bengali household when they said rasgulla khabe yeah, and you knew where, like i mean how things were going to be so it, there was no such thing as too much information for a writer there cannot be too much information he gave me the gift of his story i received it with delight Yeah great and so huh. he will not be told about royalties when his story appears in your in your next novel or the huh. novels to come yeah, no yeah. um but that but that's great because i mean both ways right a bombay and b scatological details there are plenty <laughs> of scatological details in this um not I so he's a 15 year old boy yeah <laughs> 15 so, year old boys wash with like reluctance 
I, I have no idea why 15 year old girls are scrubbing all the time they're washing 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 15 yeah. year old boys are changing their underwear by turning them inside out <laughs> you know you have to tell them are bhai your socks are dirty <laughs> you it scat your scatology is part of it <laughs> and i think also it is uh, a little about repression yeah. it's about the fact that you know uh, it is very a very rare family which does not talk about your tultul even adult males say, will say things like my tultul is hurting this morning i have morning. never heard tultul no never pull the crowd <laughs> what do you call it when you are at home a uh, tultul nunu popot <laughs> my little brother <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you say well what's the age difference <laughs> exactly. between you and your little brother <laughs> yeah my that one oh my God. my that one you should write you should write a dictionary oh sheshnag oh <laughs> babu rao <laughs> now all this is the is uh, is you know is kind of the way we evade saying penis <laughs> so when i think yuri goes to college and yeah. like his very uh, you know sophisticated pedorod friend talks about masturbation in passing he's kind of like delighted and thrilled and aghast at the same time yeah. because he's not quite sure this is kind of right yeah. you know what i mean and but you know this is fascinating jerry because the guilt that yuri feels mm. about sex about having sex about thinking about sex fascinatingly it's not a catholic guilt mm. like there's nothing religious about I'm it i'm so glad you said that yeah you know it's it's fascinating <laughs> yeah seriously no because you know there is something about like uh, okay uh, i often think of guilt as a big cake pink you know one of the pink cakes that monjinis used to do back in the day yeah it is uh, very tasteless but it is free because it is at your friend's birthday party that cake okay and you have come to a birthday party you want cake so you eat the cake and you go ah, but you eating it anyway later there is something on your all your mouth and tongue is coated you want to scratch it and clean it up and what not it is guilt is that cake we all have eaten that cake okay it's not jews who have guilt or catholics who have guilt everybody has guilt we just have different ways of dealing with it and de- different ways of passing this guilt okay and i think for uh, for yuri especially does not feel any guilt when he has love with aff- uh, sex with affection with some affection some connect but when he has random sex yeah. that's when he's kind of like what did i do what did i do like i mean you know because he's kind of like he's he's messed up yeah he's messed up but he's messed up in the way that we all messed up you know we've got i think you know when you when you start out when you're when you're a young person uh, you have little you, you're literally literally sitting there with a jhola full of of unsorted things okay there is ambition like i want to be someone and there is uh, i want to be humble also i want to be in a corner and i want someone to come and say genius come forward here you, you want all this all together and so much of it of what you want embarrasses you that you want it yeah. you don't want to want this you want to want self realization <laughs> because somewhere you read that you know self realization is really the goal and and some stupid philosophy teacher said that to you and you thought ha ha self realization na ha okay i will write that down but miss how miss what book to read miss you she like what do you do you you're flailing at that point yeah. yeah i mean i'm glad you brought up the t- philosophy teacher although in this book the english teachers <laughs> sometimes too close for comfort but <laughs> <laughs> um but i mean you know you can't forget that the you're book in is the english department no yeah. there is not an english department teacher in this country who is sane jerry <laughs> i mean tend this <laughs> No if they are sane then they are boring and you don't but they give good notes <laughs> they come to class and they say take down and everyone starts and they keeps and you know you have to like draw things in order to keep yourself entertained but you will get your 62% because they have given you all the the wild teachers come in and just ignite something in your head it's a slow fuse it will burst 
many years later yeah. you're that kind of teacher don't even pretend you're not but, okay but in a very sane way <laughs> 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 anyway, but edu we cannot forget that this title is the education of Yuri, yeah. right? It's there's so much about education here. Formal education, how screwed up the formal education system is. What you just described, the taking down notes to get your 62%. Um, but there's also the sort of informal sector of education, right? There's this idea of the education you get from traveling on the local train. Yeah. The education you get from hanging out, from bunking class, yeah. hanging out with your friends. The education you get in all these locations. So I just want to hear more from you about what you thought of that word education. Because as many of you who might have read reviews of Jerry's book will already know um, that this, is, this fits a genre or a category called the Bildungsroman. Right? And the Bildungsroman, the word Bildung itself in German means education. It's, it's a, a novel about the education of a protagonist. So the education of Yuri is literally a Bildungsroman because it's about the education of the protagonist named Yuri. See, 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 English teacher. <laughs> Did, could you not have made one little short note out of this? 65% for you, yeah. right? 65 Etymologically <laughs> speaking, Bildung's <laughs> Roman comes from... So tell us about education. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, okay, uh, about education. Uh, you know, I think... Uh, the young people who walk around with uh, t-shirts that say, I was a genius and then education ruined me and all. <laughs> yeah. I stop them in the street and I say, would you like to explain that t-shirt to me? <laughs> okay, because I'm, of course, very often they say, what t-shirt? <laughs> this and was the say, only clean one. No, I like the color. <laughs> Meaning what is written, what does it matter? That, that is something, yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyway, my thing is, I think... Um, you know, we often mistake education for what happens in, in terms of degrees and yeah. classrooms and things like that. And that's fine. That There's a, a socialization process there. I think the greatest learning in college is there will be boredom mm. in your life. Suck it up. Okay? <laughs> be bored. Okay? It's not all going to be like, you know, uh, fun time, limka times and, you know... <laughs> And Coca-Cola and whatnot. It is, there's also going to be a lot of just get the work done. That's what you learn in college. But also you learn there are people who are not like you. Yeah. Also you learn there are, you know, there are streets full of second-hand books. There are free uh, film shows. There's an art gallery across the road. There is a very stern Parsi woman guarding that art gallery. <laughs> but you learn to ignore her and walk past quickly and rush inside and see Raza paintings on the wall. And you have no idea how looking at those Raza paintings is going to inform you in a certain way. You have no idea. You're looking and sometimes you come out and say, Yak painting hai kya? What is this? I can do that. You say, all that rubbish. Okay? You, you talk like such a fool sometimes. You ha I have a copy of my Wittgenstein. Okay? Where I have written replies to Wittgenstein. <laughs> I read it now and think, are you just an, were you just an idiot? And the kind answer is yes. <laughs> you were. The, the unkind answer is, why are you surprised? You are <laughs> still. Because I, you know, this this idea um, of I remember reading your book, for instance, on desire, and thinking, my gosh. My education was incomplete until this book. I have not read, I have not seen desire teased out in this fashion. I have learned. And a well-written book by a subject expert na, pushes you back into humility <laughs> and forces you to say, you didn't think of this, you shit. Now think. Okay? <laughs> and at the end of the book, if it's a good book, a dialogue begins with that person. You will begin to contradict that person because you'll begin to look for instances where that person was wrong. But in that looking, that looking is their gift to you. That conversation is their gift to you. I cannot understand why people want to ban books that they disagree with or burn them or whatever. You disagree, when you disagree with the book, it is as much a gift as when you agree with yeah. the book. Yeah? I completely agree, but still, Jerry, the, the you know when you say there's boredom in college and you have to <laughs> suck not it in up. your class. I would just not in my class. That's different. But the thing is, the education system in even in your 
passing references to it here mm. is a frightening thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The you know, tuitions that Yuri gives. Huh, yeah, very gosh. <laughs> to people who are completely uncomprehending yeah. and who just sort of feel they have to figure this out or ratto it, memorize it, in order to pass the exam. I mean, there's something, this could be a horror story in terms of education. Yeah, yeah. It, I actually think, you know, the horror story is, is playing. I, I was a teacher of, yeah. of mathematics from the age of 14 to the age of 30. Really? Yeah, yeah. I taught mathematics privately. I went to house to house and all. I was a scum bunny. I was called uh, Duffer, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there was, uh, there was, there's a practice in, in Bombay where in the ninth standard, if you want to take tuitions with the top level teachers, you have to get over 90%. Oh, God. So you get over 90% in mathematics, then they will take you on to give you tuitions. You think, why do they need tuitions if they got 90% already? No, because one, I only had one ever, one brilliant student called Kunal Shah. Very nice boy, very studious, very... And for some reason, he, he agreed to be taught by me. Maybe because we got on and I would talk to him about uh, Fan Khok and I would talk to him about painting and stuff like that. And one day his mother came in, in tears. And I said, what happened? Uh, uh, and she said, sir, isko kuch samjhao, kuch aap samjhao. So I said, what happened? She said, sir, 93 mila usko, maths mein. 93 mein kya wo engineering kar paega, sir? MBBS kar paega, sir? Nahi, usko BSc karna padega. And I said, but aapka diamond ka business hai. <laughs> Meaning, she's saying, aha, bhale hi diamond ka business ho. Yeah. But iska matlab ye nahi ki hum apne bachche ke liye sapne nahi dek sakte. So I'm thinking, I cannot even begin to enter this logic. And on the other side, Kunal is sitting there, look like, and he's looking at me thinking, yeah, get a load of this chick, right? <laughs> 92 and she's got an issue, man, seriously. He got 98 or something in the final exam and, you know. But I'm saying, this is such a lunatic system that creates neurotic anxiety yeah. over marks and you're never, ever looking at the child. Mm -hmm. You're never looking at the child and saying, who are you? What do you want? How would it be if you, like, you want to be a dancer? Hey, let's dance. I can't imagine that happening. I can't imagine anyone saying, let's dance. To, or da to a kid who wants to dance. When they're three years old, then you say, you know, I want them to be whatever they want to be and whatnot. <laughs> Which is, and I'll make sure you want to be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. Others, I'll can kill you. At this, I couldn't deal with that neurotic anxiety, so I decided to become a journalist with the Times of India and inherited three times the neurotic anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were a duffer tutor, ha, totally, duffer teacher, yeah. Yeah. and so was Yuri. Yeah, 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 totally. But uh, you know, the only difference between me and Yuri was that there are many differences between me and Yuri. <clears throat> uh, but, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> you tell. Okay. Um, Let's start by his sex life. I mean. <laughs> if you're below 18, cover your ears. <laughs> there are below 18 here? Yeah? I don't know. Go home. <laughs> okay. Uh, though I, do, I mean, you know. Okay. It, to begin with, I think um, uh, the fundamental difference between me and Yuri is that he's Yuri and I'm me. And uh, <laughs> if I were ever to take me and put myself into a book, the book would implode. It would like, I think it would just like. That, that is true. There are, no, <laughs> there are no covers that can hold you, Jerry. <laughs> so, no, I, I think, you know, actually all of us, each one of us is just too large for books, for a book. Really, it is too large for any way of being held. We are universes. The Torah puts it beautifully when it says, you do not kill a man. You eliminate a universe. That's what, how big Every human being is. That's the basis of civil rights if you think about it. That every person is huge, illimitable, and therefore irreplaceable, and therefore of equal value to everybody else. Thank you so much. When I say nice things, no one claps. <laughs> anyway, so I'm saying you take that big monstrous thing called a universe, called a person, and you cut down and cut down and cut down until you get some homunculus, and that homunculus can populate a novel. 
Now, even within that, the homunculus cannot be as random as all of us are. Right? And we are pretty random most of the time. Freud has this lovely... Uh, I set myself last year, you know, when I was writing Yuri, I remembered all the things I had set myself. Right? You know, I will read all of Western philosophy in <laughs> summer of 92. In summer of 93, I will read... No, 82. Sorry, what do I say? I was 7, 82. 83, I will read the entire Rama, uh, Mahabharat in uh, Ganguly's 10-volume edition. It's some of... Uh, each time I put, I set this big Arabian Nights, big things like that. And somewhere along the line, we begin to edit ourselves and, and do smaller things. I'll read Proust in this, you know, the five volumes. You know. That's not small. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm saying, so I decided that this time I would, I would set myself another big project. Like I mean, in one year, I'm going to read all of Freud's collected works, right? And I came across this line which made so much sense. He says basically that. You know, the, the whole of your, your you are like a, um, a carriage being pulled along by horses that are out of control. They just are running wild, okay? And your consciousness is like the petrified <laughs> carriage driver who has only one job to explain to everybody that this is where we wanted to go <laughs> when you have been dragged somewhere that you don't want to do. So you're just explaining things to yourself post facto. So we are so random. Whereas literature fiction will not allow you randomness you have to you have to construct reasons why people do what they do how they interact what why they interact otherwise people are not going to believe it because we don't actually believe ourselves to be random human beings we start you know i think we make up who we are by telling ourselves stories mm -hmm. about ourselves you know and even every day that journaling which is so uh, popular right now, is really about constructing a self. And about not only constructing a self, making rational, verbal sense of something so large as existence. Just trying to pin that down. And to therefore have a small bit of... Because all of life is about walking a bridge that you are building at the same time. You're building the bridge. And this helps you pretend that you have a little head start on tomorrow. A little head start on tomorrow, journaling. Okay. Completely fake, because tomorrow is completely unknown. But hey, it, if it helps, let's go for it. So, the difference between me and Yuri is, if Yuri stands as a literary character, he has to be fictional. And the only way you can, you can fit a real life person into a book successfully is by saying, this is an autobiography or a biography. And he often did very peculiar things, but I don't know why. Okay? So you sort of both create him and wash your hands of him. Yeah, totally. Yeah? Mm. Which is more than what he does, washing his hands. No, yeah. he does. He does yeah. wash his hands. No, no. Yeah, he washes his hands. He washes his underwear quite, also. Yeah, he yeah. washes his underwear. Yeah, yeah exactly. Then, yeah. yeah. Uh, there were long, uh, you know, when you're actually writing a book like this, you, I always believe you should just write. Like, chal, lick, le, yaar, isme kya hai, edit me ho jayega. We just like, finish it, put it down. So there's all these details about how Theo Julio teaches him to have bath in his underwear and wash his underwear and then, and then you know, hang it out so other people don't have to wash your underwear. The weird stuff like that, which also was illuminated for me when I went, I used to go to these uh, very rich households where there would be a young man called Raju who was ironing Victoria's Secret panties. <laughs> and I would think, you want your panties ironed? <laughs> Meaning, you are in the ki muli hai? Oh, actually, no muli. But <laughs> Kate Key Moolies don't usually wear underwear, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> no, but, but actually that brings up a really, to my mind, fascinating strand in this novel. Which is, I don't even know what to call it because all these words are so politically charged these days. But a socialist strand, a mm -hmm. strand of thinking about those who might not have as much as other people do. Sure. Um, and that to me is also fascinating about your map of the city. Mm -hmm. It's also a map of class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a map of class differences. It's certainly not only geographical. Sure. Um, and it's a map of religious, not differences, but coexistence. And yet the sort of strain that that fabric is under. Yeah. Now, is that how you see the geography of Bombay? Uh, you know, uh, totally. Totally. I think, um, you know, once my father, 
and I were traveling together and I was very hungry. Uh, and he said, I will get you something to eat. And we stopped somewhere and he, it was, I think, somewhere close to my birthday or something. So he said, what would you like? And it was that time the cake shops were all Monjini's. <laughs> so I wanted Monjini's ka something, like one slice of cake slice and something. So we bought that and he came out and I tore open the packet and I was about to eat it. And he said, can you eat a piece of cake on the street in front of people who may never have eaten one? So I thought about it and I thought, yes, I can. <laughs> I, of course, knew the correct answer, yeah. And then I said, no, I can't, and I wrapped it up solemnly and whatnot. And then we got back onto the bus, and I looked around thinking, I hope only middle class. I wanted to just ask the bus, hey, Monjini is khaya na sabne? But I didn't, and I waited, and I got home, and I ate it when I got home, and I felt, but when I got home and ate it, I must say, I felt very sanctimonious. It's like, I suddenly felt, see, I waited. <laughs> I was like, yes, but okay. How, how do we become aware of the other, right? I mean, for me, another big learning was when I won this evening scholarship to go to, uh, to England. And I, you know, I, I took all my clothes. And my clothes are all cotton clothes from Bombay. And I thought after the first week, I had run out of shirts. So I thought, OK, I'm not going to iron shirts. I didn't come to London to iron shirts. I came to hang out at the British Museum. And all. So I'm going to find someone to iron my shirts. And I told a friend, I, you know, I want to get my shirts ironed. So she said, oh, really? <laughs> so she said, look for a shirt service. There must be someone on Tottenham Court Road. So I went out and I found that a sh to iron a shirt was eight pounds. I wanted to tell the man behind the counter, I can go to Fab India that time and buy a shirt for eight yeah, pounds. No longer. But Not no longer. But I'm saying that time you could. Yeah. I'm sick. And then I went back and I ironed my shirt. <laughs> and I learned in that moment that we were paying at that time, uh, it was the turn of the millennium, 99, we were paying one rupee per shirt to be ironed. And if it was not ironed to our specifications, we returned the shirt and he ironed it free and returned it to us. And it became clear to me that this was the luxury the middle class had of coexisting with poverty. That we could take from them their labor for one rupee, the same labor that someone in the, in the UK would take eight pounds for, we could take from them one uh, that labor and pay them one rupee. And I realized then, again, that we, that, you know, so there is no finishing this process of education in some ways. There is only a process by which, and my father said another very important thing to me. I just, I said once I came home, I think I'd gone to, uh, like, volunteer in Thalassery or one of those things that, you know, Roman Catholics do. They, they dig wells for poor tribals who are looking at them thinking, why have you come and what are you doing here? Go home now, we'll do this properly. Uh, but anyway, we were digging wells. And I came home and I said, you know, it was so sad because I remember that uh, something about uh, some child who had not eaten sweets and we gave them sweets and they were so delighted. But it was Raval Gaon Chigadi Ali, that Raval Gaon sweets, you know, like 10 paise sweets. Uh, and my father said, keep, keep the wound bleeding. I just felt chilled by that. But uh, I also felt uh, that there was, in some way, uh, to keep your wound bleeding is to keep actually acknowledging privilege and poverty. Pri my privilege, their poverty. My privilege, their poverty. It, in some ways, it will ground you and, you know, and then... Uh, one of the strangest things is like going out of this this theater. Someone will say to someone else, "The NCPA air conditioning is too cold." <laughs> it's like, really? That's your complaint? <laughs> it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh. yeah. I mean, and also in addition to being a layering of class differences of religious coexistence, it's also, a uh, it's also a layering of linguistic differences. Mm. I mean, one of the things that we from Delhi feel very snootily about Bombay is that no one speaks language in Bombay properly, right? Everyone is a mishmash of like 500 languages. Yeah. It's all a mess. You yeah. people don't know what you're saying, this, Correct. that and the other. And the Hindi especially is sort of hilarious, right? Yeah. I just love the way in which you've captured that in this book. Thank you. <laughs> and so, first of all, I mean, we want to hear something from the book, okay. of course. 
So can you read out something in which okay. one of these yes. linguistic gems okay, or sure. a few of them? Um, we'll do that Arif, uh, conversation. In, or what about Arif is always full of yeah, yeah. Arif is a, amazing lines. Yeah. And he's also a diamond merchant's son, ne? Ne, not diamond No, no, cloth merchants. merchants. He's a cloth, cloth merchant. Okay, yeah, cloth merchants. Pedi. Pedi mein hai wo. And this, I mean, at one point, they, <laughs> the cloth merchant's son and Yuri and everybody is going, what, uh, they've decided that they're going to study French. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so all, like, I mean, this young girl called Bhavna, who is very South Bombay and, you know, has studied French in the Alliance very, for a long time. So, <laughs> she says all the, those sounds perfectly. So she is asked to, uh, to teach Arif and Yuri, who are both starting French, to teach them. So, Arif bowed to Bhavna. Chalo, class kare. Where shall we go? The milk bar? Bhavna nodded and they repaired there too. Arif was well known, it seemed. Tea was ordered and Etra conjugated. Bhavna sipped her tea and, re and then reared back. Too sweet, she said. I'm on a diet. Arif rolled his eyes. Why? It's not about, it's about health, okay? Not about weight, said Bhavna and then directed their attention to je suis and to a. All forms to be learned tomorrow, boys. We have avoir to hit. Full on, madam, mug, 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 said Yuri. <laughs> said Arif, but without enthusiasm, then yelled in the direction of the counter. Hey, chicken omelette, mera wala. Bin lassun, bin pyaas, sahi hai boss, came the echo. Yuri raised his eyebrows. My Janu is a jain, said Arif. He seemed unsurprised when they laughed. No, really. Onion garlic means no kisses. She doesn't worry about chicken. Why should she worry? If she's Jain, she's a vegetarian, said Bhavna with faint disdain. Vegetarian? She won't drink milk, but she'll take iron tonic. I told her my uncle supplies the blood to those factories that make iron tonic from the slaughterhouses near Sayan Devnar. Can we go there? Bhavna asked. Arif looked puzzled. Why? I want to see them. There is no charm there. Yuri says, I think she wants the opposite of charm. Arid, instead, go see a Ramsey Brothers film. Who are the Ramsey Brothers? They sound Scottish. <laughs> you don't know Ramsey Brothers? His education has been sorely neglected, said Bhavna. Delicately ironic. Yuri saw that Arif reg registered this, but ignored it. Paper laure! He ordered the waiter. Kaun sa paper? Are akbar mere akal ke dushman newspaper kal ka hai chalega daudega do gaz samin ke niche was showing at gitu talkies you will come back with kits and khatmal huh warned bhavna nothing like that i have seen lots of films at gitu chal if you eat fast we can catch the 3 o'clock don't we have to book in advance said yuri in gitu for second run Tuesday, 3 o'clock show. If there's no current booking now, I'll give you, buy you the theater for your birthday. <laughs> yeah. Arif has real gems. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think he was one of my favorite, favorite characters. My mamu has three nipples, he says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apropos the real, he tells, uh, he tells Yuri at some point, uh, they're walking in Mahim and he says, PL Raj lives in this building. So Yuri says, who is PL Raj? So, Arif says, I also don't know. <laughs> but when I tell people, they say, Arif, ha. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's a wonderful character. Actually, Yuri, Yuri's lines are not as memorable as Arif's lines, I think. See, this is the problem with Yuri, and Yuri understands this terribly in some deep, sad Watch part that. of himself. Yeah. He knows he is... Uh, like, you know, in uh, a, if there is a straight a comedian and a straight guy, right. the straight guy just feeds the lines and the comedian gets the big laughs. Yeah. Yuri is that straight guy. Yeah. And he hates it. He hates his life. But what he doesn't understand and what he will, I think, eventually when he is 80 and, you know, gray and full of sleep and dozing by the fire, take down this book and slowly read and think of the love you once had. Once all that is happening to him, he will realize that he's... His, his quietness drew these people to him. And in drawing these people to him, his life became richer. So the quiet person is not necessarily the fool. 
the quiet person is actually the catalyst that allows other people to take the stage, to perform, and he's a good audience and he's a good spectator. And so, therefore, his life will get richer and richer. Don't you worry, Yuri. <laughs> Pa Papa Jerry's got you. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, just one last um, question, oh, really? Jerry. Before no, no, we have ah. to have you know ah, yeah, people yeah. here. They're taking off their earphones. And <laughs> anticipation, um, which is about there are real people in this novel, <laughs> right? And and you were talking about when I said what's the relationship between Yuri and Jerry, and you said no, no, I am mm. me, Yuri is Yuri, mm. but there's Adil Dasabala, then there's some Ezekiel. There are all these people here. Yeah. So yeah. how are they here? Oh, Did you okay. ask them? No, I mean, some are dead. <laughs> so that's okay. <laughs> but I think if Eunice had had lines in the book, I would have asked her spirit also. <laughs> because no, no fussing with Eunice, man, seriously. <laughs> Okay, Adil, I showed the book too in advance, and I said, "Please read and see if you disapprove of anything and whatnot." Uh, and he didn't. He had no. He said nothing about it. I think. Okay, here's the thing. When I said no, that uh, that um, pe people make cities. Yeah. Uh, for me, the landmarks of a city are not Gateway of India yeah. and Kanheri Caves. The landmarks of the city are Adil Jasawala, Nisim Ezekiel, Sham Benegal, uh, Dom Morais, Eunice D'Souza, Pope T. Hiranandani, uh, Vasant Abhaji Dahake, Vijaya Rajadyaksha, um, Shanta Gokhale, Prabodh Parikh. You know, these are people, genuinely brilliant, life-changing, art-inflecting people who were in my space. I wanted to pay homage to them. I wanted to say, you guys listened. You guys made me feel seen. You, you paid attention. You were there. You were available in a democratic, open Bombay way. How lucky did we get? And this was my homage. Mm. Salam, sir. All of you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've never quite understood audience Q&A for a book launch because presumably you haven't read the book yet. But, but, tell, Mar. but we always have it, so I think we have to have it today as well. Um, and you know, the thing is we can't even give away the plot, whatever, spoiler alerts. But please, if you have questions for Jerry, now's the time to ask it, otherwise right you will regret it for the rest of yeah. your lives. Go ahead. Yeah, and I think we don't have mic, roving mics here, so just speak. Shout. Journaling. I want to ask you okay, about a point yeah, on journaling. Um, so if one doesn't have a story, huh. or one shouldn't have a story huh. for one's life, huh. how do you live? Oh, no, 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 no. When did I ever say that you shouldn't journal or you shouldn't do a story? What I said is, okay, uh, there are two forms of journaling, okay? One form of journaling is therapy journaling. You're doing it because you're doing it to achieve some kind of stability, calm. Someone told you journaling, someone wrote about it. Blah, 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 blah. The second kind of journaling is I want to be a writer and this is my riyaz. Now, if that is your journaling, then you have complete liberty to invent. I met Jerry Pinto today. Jerry Pinto said, uh, the best thing I have ever eaten is a naan khatai between bacon. It doesn't matter. You are doing your chops. You are exercising your muscles. When you're journaling in that way, storyfy. Don't just write, got up in the morning and went to the... Take one thing that happened in your life that day and do a little like dialogue, description, nuancing, anything you want. That is your riyaz as a writer. Your journaling as a therapy is a different matter altogether. Vaha, ciao. Eshkar. Dil khol ke. But do not ever think that that is writing. That is you and this. this that may have a beej. You will have to find that beej in the vomit. That work is also important. Looking for the beej. Finding it. Okay? And the horror of reading a journal that you wrote 5 or 10 years ago will dawn on you when, you have, when you're 10 years older. Oh, such self-pity. And what was it about? 
Yeah. Anyone else? All, yeah, yeah. All the way in the back. Yeah. From the front row to Hello. the back. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm audible. Uh, my name is Ria. Uh, I want to ask you, you talked about guilt actually. Um, like when Yuri, you were talking about like when he was, um, when he had sex, when he was in an affection with a girl, but when he had sex with someone, when he was not in affection, why do children today, even in my own friend circle, I see that when you have one night stand or a random sex, you have yeah. more guilt huh. rather than having sex with someone you have in, have affection a lot. Why does that happen in today's world? You know, uh, it's because I think, uh, I think, oh God, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I just have to come out and look at all of you and say that anything I say here should not be used against me in a court of <laughs> law. Also. Sex without an emotional part of it, some emotional connect between you and the person you're having sex with is not as pleasant as masturbation, as a good masturbation session. Okay? What makes sex beautiful and special is an emotional connect with the partner. So when you don't have that emotional connect, the hollowness of le petit mort, what they call the, you know, the French have called beautifully the little death that follows uh, orgasm, is filled by negative emotion. And that negative emotion sometimes is given the name guilt, sometimes it's given the name, you know, sorrow, sometimes it's given any number of names. But the only way we build, I think, uh, protective barriers around ourselves is by actually feeling something warm and gentle towards the person we are encountering in the sexual act. That's, that's my completely personal and indefensible and it's like a throwout thing to you. Don't please take it as advice. Don't take it as gospel truth. Take it as Jerry truth, a fractured truth from a fractured person who's trying to understand why these things happen and writing to try and understand. There is no way in which an, a writer is a repository of truth. A writer is a repository of questions. And the question is thrown at you and you receive it and make some answer. Yeah? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for that question which was a lovely thought also. Yeah. Yeah. Other hands? Yeah, great. Hi. It's a pleasure to see you always smile. Huh. And there's a lovely line that states that humor is the hallmark of intelligence. Mm. Jerry, how do you have this immense flow? Yeah? You huh. just are on the ball. Your timing is so apt. It's like Obama <laughs> dropping the mic if you get my drift, right? Yeah. 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 Where does this come from? Can you just give us a tiny So break? sweet, yeah. Nice yes. compliment. Very nice. Thank you so much. How much did he... <laughs> this was not a paid endorsement. <laughs> just, to, just to make clear. We'll talk later. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you so much for that, really. Okay. One thing in common, we both stay in a lovely place called Mahimkar. Yay! Hey, Mahimkar. Okay. So, uh, fundamentally, I started teaching at the age of 14. I was 14 when I started teaching, and I taught right up to 56, which is now. I'm thinking now, this is time now, it's 45, more than 40 years, no one should be doing this. It sounds like an old bureaucrat, I should get a gold medal, I should get one, I should get a plaque on my back or something like that. It is time to stop teaching, but I discovered one thing. First is that if the kid laughs at any point in time, just by accident even, in, while you're teaching them mathematics, they calm down. And once they've started calming down, because they're terrified. Most kids who are teaching math, they're just terrified. They hate it. They can't understand why minus 3 into minus 3 is plus 9. How are you? Nine, minus and minus and both minuses and multiplying them, they become plus 9. How? And like drawing a number line doesn't work. But you start them on, like you start them joking. You start gen generally just kidding with them. And suddenly there's such a relaxation that they start whistling when they're doing mathematics. Okay, that was my biggest success. Imran Ali Khan, whistling while he did mathematics. Masume, whistling while, singing gently to herself as she did her mathematics. Huh? Hey! Hi! Oh, so, so sweet. Okay. And so, you know, those, those things, and then I started teaching in a class, a formal class, SCM, uh, Social Communications Media, the Sophia uh, College, 44 South Bombay chicks, you know. <laughs> All armed and dangerous. <laughs> How sweet. 
Oh God. <laughs> oh, lovely girls. Lovely women. Lovely women. All like, I mean, you know, dead, sometimes just capable of savagery and capable of immense kindness also. Both. That's human beings, okay? But I had to get a way to get around them, right? I had to find a way to get around them. And the best way was so, I have had hundreds of hours of making people laugh. Hundreds of hours. If I couldn't make you laugh today, lanat hai hum par. Okay? You're an easy audience. You've come in relaxed. You know? <laughs> so, kids in a Then, class. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Hi, Sudha. Bolo. So, I really want to know um, just performance anxiety. So, does, does, did it scare the hell out of you when you wrote this book? Because it comes on the back of M in the Big Home. And this is something every time, like I, I write books, I don't write books which are as, like I write non-fiction. But even though, if I've had a very successful book, it scares the hell out of me. So, for you, the stakes are so much higher because of what you have written, what you created before this. Okay. That's a very sweet thing to say. Thank you so much. And I take it as an endorsement for him in the big home as well. Uh, but, you know, uh, when I, uh, when there was one very big temptation, which is not to write any more novels. You know, I'm in the big home, okay, and I'm, I'm done, right? But a worm of a novel began to grow in me. And then I thought to myself, Jerry, all your life, Right from age 14, I started teaching for freedom because I wanted to be able to decide what I wanted to study. I wanted to pay for myself. I wanted to pay for my clothes. I wanted nothing from anybody. Of course, you were, I, mean, I was eating my father's food. I was living in his house. All that never occurred to me, but all that is Chutya Giri of. Sorry. <laughs> I have decided to have a new one. I, this is the Andeve Pana of the. So then let's just move it from like the vagina to the penis. This is the Andve Pana of a young man who just thinks that, you know, he will be independent. And because of that, my freedom was curtailed in college. I had to go and give my tuitions to get my money, right? This is what I discovered, that play between freedom and, and uh, this. And I thought to myself, when I started writing this book, I said, Jerry, you staked everything on freedom. You stopped taking salaries for freedom. You, for, you stopped, uh, you know, sort of like, you stop playing the game, the literary game for freedom, right? You decided that whenever anyone asked you a question, you would be free to answer it honestly to that person, regardless of how embarrassed or noxious or whatever it was. If all this is free, why are you not free to write a new book now? Why are you not free? Because you wrote him in the big home. Chalna yaar. Chodo kal ki baatein. Kal ki baat purani. That was yesterday, yeah. This is today. This is my, my, my joy. In language, in writing, in creation. I'm going to cur curtail that for performance anxiety. So every time performance anxiety came up, and it came up all the time, I kicked it in the head. And I kept on writing. And I kept on writing. And of course, I talked to friends, and you know, I moaned on friends' shoulders, and they said, bastard. <laughs> You're moaning because you wrote a good book. This is called moan. I give you a slap now. Ah, then you say, okay, fine. <laughs> so, you, If you don't have friends to puncture your pomposity, na, you, have you have nothing. And especially if you're male. Women have a sort of, in, I think most women, 80% of women, some 20% are shits. But <laughs> meaning every, like, dunya mein baut sare shits hai, women and men also. Most women have a pomposity meter they, that immediately tells them, hey. Well, because we're not rewarded for being pompous. Correct. Whereas men, Whereas like, men are reward. You have said such a nice thing. Um, <laughs> Take it away, Madhuri. Uh -huh. Hi, huh? Yeah. yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Samya. I want to come to the topic of the session. Uh, so I moved here on Bombay. Oh? <laughs> Bombay local. Bombay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, so I moved here a year ago, and since then, all. Welcome! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, from where did you come? Uh, from UP, from Agra. Agra. Agra, huh? Yeah. So, since then, whatever I have written, whatever essays I've published, whatever photos I've taken, they've been about the city. Uh, you've talked about how uh, the city, cities are people. Mm -hmm. For me, the city, this city is a companion. It's a person. It affects my life. Like, I think all cities affect your life depending on how much you let them. 
but this affects my life in you know what time i can roam about what i can wear what i can do what people i can meet what strangers i can meet but at the same time i feel all this romanticization of the city and this is just you know me self reflecting is it affecting the way i see reality like you know how much this idea of mumbai of bombay of all of this does it make you blind to a lot of things that is happening to the city in the city a uh, lovely question thank you so much for that uh you even got applause from the audience for the question we have a tendency to romanticize bombay and mumbai especially i think because it is different from the rest of the world uh but it is also not different from the rest of the world okay there is uh there are to just take a very simple example when a when a migrant laborer comes here he generally leaves his wife at home hmm uh he leaves his sister his mother at home he's come at here he lives in a room with eight other men most of the time he is in male companionship he has he misses completely the gentling of a woman's presence now this is the man who may grope you on the bus does this make it uh make it acceptable certainly not does it make it understandable perhaps we cannot ignore the fact that every city has teeth i talk about in in the book about the fact that yuri wants to claim the city he wants to be a mumbaiker he wants to own and walk through it with a sense of belonging and the city seems to reject him all the time for me often uh the city you say it's a companion and that's a lovely way to put it for me the city is also an archive and it's an endless archive and if i cannot know the city then how can i claim it and therefore do i therefore i have come now to the conclusion at the hum, age of 56 that there is no claim to be made there is no claim to be made there is only a negotiation there is a constant negotiation between this self and the city self and the negotiation must be made fresh because each time you step out intias darkar has a lovely line i step into the city and collide with it okay and that is it right this city is also a collision it is also a companion it's also an archive all these are they romantic yes if you are living a you are one of eight men living in a, in um in a little shanty and you have to walk for a toilet and water is not available this is true but should it prevent us from enjoying what we do have i think that man in the shanty would be surprised and startled if you refuse to enjoy what you have he'd say why not it's yours enjoy it because when he gets something and when he claims something which he will eventually or some will he will enjoy it so i think we need to find a way and this is where guilt comes in also right middle class guilt we are constantly being feeling guilty i wonder if mr ambani feels guilty right i don't know i'm i'm just thinking aloud i don't know whether he does or not i wonder if he feels guilty or whether it's us who feel guilty us in between sandwich wale you know with our uh, like we are eating our fettuccine <laughs> and we are going out and seeing that oh the roadside shops now have panini advertised in them and with we are acknowledging this strange world we know that the man behind the counter who is making the panini has no idea that it he is making a, what is supposed to be an italian dish so, he is making pizza <laughs> i was like we can only constantly negotiate and we can only constantly negotiate with the city in good faith we can't know what the city thinks of us i don't know if this answers your question i'm really sorry but it is something i hope that you will write a lovely essay about <laughs> because it is a good thought no it's really it's a seriously good thought to start with and open out what's your name Soumya. Soumya, what? Soumya. And where do you write? I mean, these essays and all that you said. Ah, please. Do. Thank you. That'll be nice. So, I'd like to read. But since we're talking about sandwiches, no. we've been told it's time to wrap up. Wrap up. So, um, thank you all so much. Please go out and buy Jerry's book, and he will be signing books in the foyer right after this. Thanks so thank much, you, Jerry. Thank you. So and much. congratulations. Thank you.